Hey, what's up, everyone? So here, let's you know uh, brainstorm and talk about infinite scrolling. We will be understanding how we can implement infinite scrolling using JavaScript. Okay. So before just getting into the video, let's understand why do we need it in the first place. Of course, a lot of would uh, you would be already knowing it, but you know I'll just uh, state out some major factors. Like it can be um, because of user experience, the user experience you want to give and all that. Um, it can be for handling pagination so that you don't overload your browser client side browser by you know bombarding them with a lot of data. And it can be you know multiple reasons could be there. Okay. So let's for example let's assume that this is your web browser. Okay. And let's uh, say we have our posts coming in like this. So you know this is the direction in which the posts are uh, coming up. And then uh, let's say you have maybe 10 posts, and each post is about how much? Let's say 2 KBs. So 10 posts would be 20 KBs. Okay. So 20 KBs is not a big deal. You can directly load it into the browser. Let's say you have 50 posts. So then you will have 100 KBs, which is like 0.1 MBs. Again, that is not a lot. So you can do this. Uh, you know, and why would you want to load it all at once? Of course, because to save network calls. Let's say currently, you know, this page you get the data. So what will happen is, uh, for getting these data, you will ping a backend server, right? And then, but that backend server will return you this data, and then you will be using this to, you know, um, uh, show to the users. Okay. So just to, you know, reduce unnecessary network calls and causing resource, uh, you know, uh, causing extra resource and everything, you want to, let's say, handle all the data at once. Okay. So that is fine. Now let's assume that, you know, what happens when you have, let's say, ten thousands of posts. Okay. So that would mean around twenty thousand KBs, which would be around twenty. MBs of data, which again seems not too much, but you know, let's say you have multiple states and a lot of things going around and everything. You know, those things can affect your browser performance, okay? And that is when you want to basically perform pagination kind of thing or infinite scrolling. So what happens is that when user reaches the bottom, then you keep on loading more posts, okay? And let's say there are two types of infinite scrolling. One is load more. I mean, this is not a terminology or a definition. I'm just coming up with uh, names so that I could explain you better. And the other one is load specific. At a time, okay. So what does these two mean, okay? So let's say initially, in, initially you load with ten posts, okay. And when the user reaches the bottom, every time they reach the bottom, you add five more posts, okay. So the way it will go is initially it would be ten, then it would be ten plus five, then next time it will be ten plus five plus five, and next time it will be ten plus five plus five plus five, and so on, okay. So this is like load more infinite way. Basically, you are keeping, you are not keeping track of how many posts you want to load at a time. You keep on increasing as the user keeps on loading, okay. So that is number one. Now number two would be loading five posts at a time. That is same, but you also want to keep a window of uh, keep a window of five posts only. Okay. What does this mean? This means that you keep a track of, you know, start index and the end index. Okay. So let's say start index and end index is initially 10. Okay. Zero to 10. So you will load posts from zero to nine, assuming that 10 is the uh, out, outer limit. Okay. So first you load 10 posts. Now, as you move next, you will load one to 11 posts. I mean, indexes will change. So it will uh, load, you know, the first post will be gone away and the 10th post would be visible. Okay. So this time again, it will be 10 posts. So the difference is that this time you always load 10 posts. Okay. You just change the index. So let's say if you have 100 posts, so first time you will load 0 to 10. The next time you will load 1 to 11 and you will keep on going, you know, uh, until you load all the posts. Okay. So that is the idea. In this case, you will always have 10 posts in your browser so that MBs of for 10 posts would be always 20 KBs and, you know, you will have enough memory. So the browser as your app application will be performant. Okay. You don't want to load more than 10 posts at any point okay of course they have their own limitations in this case the api calls keep on increasing but you still have the older data so when you go upward so in the first case the api call will be one way that is when you reach the bottom of the scroll i mean bottom point okay in the second case you will have you know even more api calls because let's say you have the bottom and you want to see the top post then you will scroll up okay so whenever you trigger the scroll up top scroll point then you have to reset the indexes and make the call and load those posts accordingly okay so these posts that you see here that will be loaded on based on these two start and end index okay so the api calls would be more but the uh, end application, the web application that you have would be more performant. Of course, instead of hitting the direct backend server, you can keep this data into a cache and then you know you can uh, put everything in that cache and take it out from there whenever required. So that is another topic. We won't be discussing that. But yeah, I mean, it can be based on you know what is your requirement because even let's say if you keep following this 10 plus 5 plus 5 plus 5, it will keep on increasing and adding to your browser memory. Okay. So this is why you want to implement something like infinite scrolling. And now let's go and quickly see examples and let's get started. Okay. So this is on uh, the web page that I just designed for myself, like a web portfolio. You will see that, you know, these are the memories, active memory instances that are, you know, taking up and you will see once I load the, uh, the component mounts, you will see how much uh, you will see this particular chunk, which loads all the YouTube content and it is 28.4 MB and just see how exponentially it increases. You can see that it reached 9, 191 MBs of data, which is a lot. Reason being, if I go at the bottom, you will see that you will see some lags also, right? This all lag is because of this much of memory load at a time okay so all the videos that i'm you know publishing or posting all of this is loading all at once and that's what is causing you can see that, that it has went to 328 mbs which is humongous okay 343 and it's still increasing so how do we optimize this okay what we want is we want to have an infinite scroll happening here okay we can have um infinite scroll like that load more so let's call this as um, method one 
and the other one is like load specific at a time which is method 2 okay we can have any two any one of these all right uh, so let's start with the load more one so i'll just go to my react component so this is the videos you will see all the videos loading all at once so initially we want to have you know we want to set a limit so how this will happen is we have initial uh, you know initial amount of uh, the end point so this would be the end point and we keep on adding plus 5 when someone reaches the bottom okay so let's quickly write the code um, const end index set end index equal to react dot use state initially let's say we want to load four videos and then we will keep on going okay further and let's have a videos comma set videos equal to react dot use state and it would be array of i video elements so in case this is typescript stuff so don't get confused if you are new to typescript but in case if you're not aware what is this i video elements let me show you so this just mimics the you know id number video id and heading that i pass and this is like the video json file so based on this the rendering happens okay so it's just that inter interface so currently i'm setting it as empty one or not empty i think i can just you know put it like this videos dot slice or yeah i mean let's keep it empty so that it doesn't load at the first attempt okay so we will add the first use effect react dot use effect And here, what we will do is we will. Uh, so you know, in order to load these videos, let me just comment this out. And I already have a backend API. Let me show you that too, which returns you know the total videos uh, based on whatever limit we pass in. Okay. And if I show you the API call, the way it works, this is the API request. And if I click hit on send, you will see that I get all the videos. Like currently, the limit is 15 and total is 22. So it loads all the videos accordingly okay so i'll be using making use of this api so let's comment the actual thing out and here i'll do a fetch call fetch and api endpoint i'm using next.js so you know um you know, we can directly use uh, create endpoints like next.js is a full stack framework so you it allows you to create the endpoints directly okay so i'll put in the end index here and i don't need to specify anything else then response i'll try to convert it into json then data and here i'll do set data i mean set videos to data dot videos okay so this would be the use effect and this should change every time end index changes okay so this is like the first thing and now i can replace videos all right so let's go back refresh everything and see what's the difference that we observe so if you see currently it's 6.6 .6 mbs and it it will increase because it is trying to load the data for this but still it won't go you know that high that we used to see earlier so let me go here and you can see that it's around 48.1 mbs it's still increasing but not to that extent that we used to have earlier okay so it would be staying around this range all right so the first part is then now how do we load more videos on you know scrolling at the bottom so we need to first detect if it is actually reaching the bottom okay what do we do for that let's have an on scroll event so let's have on scroll and here uh, before that we also need to track the reference of this div so let's create a reference uh, so uh, i think you are familiar with use ref hooks basically this helps you you know keep a track of any particular dom element that you want to and you need to pass this uh, into the element so currently i'll be operating into this uh, div and in, in order to show you how it looks let me quickly go here and add a border border would be two pixel solid red so let's wait for this to refresh and you can see that it has come down also earlier it was 54 mb now it is 32 mb let me refresh it so you can see that this is the box where you know we would be tracking the infinite scroll so let me just remove this back and go to index okay so let's add a function now so first we need to add a ref here so let me quickly add a ref okay and let's have this function so let's get the current so current equal to ref dot current and we also need to check if current exists basically the current reference and if it exists then we need to get the properties which is scroll top then we want client height and we also want scroll height okay so these properties we will get from current and let me explain you what does this mean so maybe let's go to a new section and enter the draw mode okay so this is your whole container all right and let's quickly draw the viewport height so let me take a pen let's say we are at in between okay at midway somewhere okay so this would be you know uh, the 
viewable container okay so initially it would be at the top and as you keep on scrolling it will reach the bottom all right so this is this whole thing is your setup right now okay now for infinite scroll first we need to understand the terminologies which is called scroll height then the other one is called client height and finally you have scroll top okay uh, scroll height and client height are in pixels absolute numbers there is no decimal point so no decimals okay and let me just quickly copy this and paste it for this guy as well the scroll top is basically you know in fractions and it is uh, i mean again it is also in pixels but it is in decimal number because it can be a certain fraction of you know uh, overall scroll that has happened okay so this one is in decimal and so for that um, yeah so these three terminologies once you know let's quickly draw things up so this whole height let me just try to move it somewhere here and let's again try to draw it yeah so this whole height that is you know whatever is hidden non hidden in the viewport you see this whole height is known as the scroll height okay so this whole thing is basically your scroll height okay doesn't matter what is in viewport what is not the entire height is called the scroll height now how much ever you have scrolled from the top that is called the scroll drop okay and of course this is in fraction because you can scroll to certain fraction limits as well so let me move it here so this is called scroll top okay and this blue screen area that you see here this blue screen area is the client height okay so let me quickly add this guy as well uh this would be something like this okay so this is your client height okay now we want to figure out the condition when it reaches this client height reaches the bottom okay so what would be what would be the equation at that time okay so you can see that currently scroll top plus client height plus some remaining area is the scroll height area okay so this is some remaining content but just see what happens when we reach the bottom okay when we reach the bottom this would be the bottom height okay let me bring it to the bottom and let me uh let me zoom it so that i get more accuracy okay yeah i think it would be about somewhat like this so the client height would be this and the amount that we have scrolled from the top this whole thing would be your scroll top okay so we have these two as here so when the client reaches the bottom you can clearly see that scroll height is equal to client height plus scroll top okay and of course because this is in decimal so we can we should take the tolerance of plus minus 1 pixels okay that is very important all right so this is the scenario that we are going to replicate uh, when we write the code so basically when scroll height is equal to scroll top plus client height with a tolerance of plus minus 1 that is uh, scroll height is greater than equal to uh, of course rounding scroll top rounding scroll top plus client height because client height is always going to be in pixels and scroll height uh, of course we need a plus minus 1 tolerance so let's have a minus 1 here and scroll height less than equal to round off scroll top plus client height again and plus 1 pixels okay plus 1 minus 1 is for tolerance okay uh, because this would be in fraction so we don't want to miss any case okay so when this condition meets that means our container has reached the bottom and we need to load more videos okay so now let's get back into the coding and see the example so const computed scroll height equal to math dot round off scroll top plus client height okay and we need to there can be accuracy of plus minus 1 so let's keep i mean let's consider that that also so if scroll height greater than equal to computed scroll height uh, minus 1 and and scroll height less than equal to computed scroll height plus 1 okay if this is the case then we will just lock for now that we have reached bottom okay so this is number 1 and now let's have this in our div uh, so we will have on scroll event listener and put it there okay so each time we reach bottom we see the this trigger okay so you can see that every time we reach the bottom it triggers it up okay so now what we can do is um here we can set end index to index plus 1 i think plus 2 would be better okay okay so now if i go down you will see more videos getting loaded all right and we can keep seeing these unless we reach the extreme bottom okay so this is about how you can you know implement infinite scroll and i think that's the last video and of course these thumbnails will take some time to load so you can set up the priority accordingly but yeah i mean this is the way you can have this infinite scroll happening i hope this was useful to you we just did basic computation and calculations and how can you enable the top infinite scroll also that we discussed it is also very simple uh, for now i'll just put a you know if condition that is if scroll top equal to 0 then you can just log console log top scroll is 0 something like that or reach top scroll okay and i think i have a typo here so let's see how that works
let me just clear this off the whole console and go to the top you can see that it says top scroll zero and let's say if i come back and again go top scroll zero so you can see that that is how you can implement you know top scroll as well okay